Alan, what a delight and a privilege and a pleasure it is this side to uh, welcome you on to the show. Thank you very much for your time, Thank mate. you. My pleasure. Are you excited about tonight? Oh, dear, that's a very interesting question. Look, you're always excited, of course, when Australia are playing the All Blacks, but I suppose for both countries there's heightened expectation because it's been a pretty uneven season for both sides and we don't quite know what's, who's going to turn up tonight. Is it the way they, the team that plays well or the team that plays badly? So, And the other thing that concerns me is that it's a test match. I can't believe it. But on a Thursday night, I cannot believe that. Yeah, look, it's, and it yeah. seems to suggest to me, you know, the extent to which our wonderful, wonderful game with such tremendous history, and particularly between our two countries, is relegated to some midweek match. It, I just find that extraordinary. Look, let's just let's let's touch on that before we start, because we've been talking about that obviously this side of the ditch as well, Alan. And the fact that you know we've got Silver Lake here and the All Blacks, and they talk a good game, and they tell us they're going to go for global domination and 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 march into the United States and take over. And yet here we are in a city like Melbourne, and we can't actually get a weekend game because of the AFL. Is this is this a mistake from the administrators to put this game in Melbourne? Does it, does, it, does the rugby public deserve it to be played in a city or that or a province of, of Australia that is rugby? be mad? Of course it does. Look, I can't... You know, it's very difficult for me to be criticising my own people, but I, I sometimes wonder if these people know what they're doing. Uh, we we have... And I think you're in a similar problem, I might add. Uh, the administration of the game mm. is by people who don't seem to have an intimate understanding of the game. I don't know how these people get into these positions, but, you know, there's no... You're absolutely right. There are venues, uh, very significant venues, uh, in other capital areas which are rugby strongholds, which are available and we're not playing the game there. And this is a distinct lack of organisational ability, a lack of foresight, but it's an offence to the game, quite frankly. The All Blacks and the Wallabies don't play midweek tests full stop. Alan Jones is with us out of Australia, the most popular talk host over there, and of course coached the Wallabies to a victory at Eden Park in a series win in 1986. The way the game has been played and refed at the moment, and especially the way it has been refed in the TMO, Alan, I mean, one of the biggest things we fear in every test match these days, it seems, is how on earth it is going to be ruled or overruled. Hmm. Well, firstly, <clears throat> again, we've got the same problem. The laws of the game are made by people sitting in a boardroom somewhere in London. They're most probably octogenarians who have lost contact with the game. The referee has far too much power. The notion of a referee packing down a scrum is ludicrous. <laughs> now, many of these referees, are, they're very good referees, yep. but they, they may have never played the game. I mean, they're technical theorists. And, you know, this is... So, we, we, in an 80-minute game, we get about 30 minutes of football. Yep. Who's going to keep watching this stuff? And here is a referee, and we, he, the world can hear him, and then he goes to the TMO. And so these people are the dominant figures in the game when that ought to be 30 players. So there's a whole revision. The first thing, I mean, you don't have a referee determining when a scrum packs down. The players know that better than anybody else. And if there are, you know, indiscretions in the packing down of the scrum, well, of course, you can penalise them. But, I mean, all the time that I coached, I mean, I can't remember how many times there would be a penalty. I mean, the greatest anomaly is, and I'm sure you've noticed this because New Zealanders know the game backwards, penalising... <laughs> penalising the team when they're actually putting the ball in. Yeah, it's now, crazy. Now, why yeah. when you're putting the ball in the scrum, when you're closer to the scrum than anybody else, would you create an infringement? So this is some technical thing about the way they're bound or whether they're like square in the scrum or side in the scrum. Get out of the road and let the games continue and let it be played. So they are the impediments and very serious impediments to the continuity of the game. And if we can't secure continuity of the game, we can't ex people, expect people to come through the turnstiles. What they're obviously trying to do is they're trying to spread the gospel across Australia. But you know, is the, is the, is the game in the state of the, of, of the game in Australia just a little bit thin to do that at the moment? Well, I've, I've argued this for months and months, and they don't like hearing from me. I mean, nobody, nobody listens to anything I say, but uh, because you might be talking common sense. You know, if you build, I use the analogy, if you spend in a home all your money on the roof, and nothing on the floor, the home collapses. So if you take that to rugby, uh, the roof, the money, and this is people, I mean, we've got a captain on uh, $1.2 million a year and he's not playing. 
So he's got personal leave. Apparently he's had a couple of mental problems or something. Beyond one point two million, and here are grassroots. Our grassroots get absolutely nothing. Our schools get next to nothing. Uh, the, the, now you can't expect the game to prosper if you don't work from the ground up. And I've said for ages and ages and ages that money has to be spent because the AFL are running over the top of us now. They've now, in Australia, signed a massive broadcasting deal and they've got money to burn and they'll just infiltrate the schools. I mean, I was a teacher once. I taught at some of the most prestigious private schools in Australia. And I go back, particularly the King's School at Parramatta, uh, the oldest school in Australia, and I can't believe it. I can't see uh, rugby posts. I can see soccer nets. I can see AFL po- goal posts, and then somewhere up in the obscure doyle up the back, there's a few rugby posts. I mean, w- once upon a time, when you went to pick the under-15s, you could go under-15s A, B, C, D, E, and F. Now now schools, prestigious schools like Shaw, struggle to get a 15 A's and B's. So if someone's pretending that the game is growing, when that is what's happening at the grassroots, they're really not facing reality. Alan Jones with us on the platform, Bledisloe Cup tonight in Melbourne. The future of Super Rugby, is it essential that us and Australia stay together on this? Because Rugby Australia, the chairman, of course, Hamish, is, you know, okay, well, there you go, you've answered that question, yeah? Oh, well, who's the chairman of Rugby Australia? (laughs) Hamish McLennan, he is, and he's the guy that keeps mouthing off about that that Australia doesn't need need New Zealand. I I mean, listen, I know. Hamish, 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 go back to your boardrooms, eh? Go back to your boardrooms, but stop pretending you know anything about rugby. Uh, I mean, I'm tired of all of these people. Of course, uh, the nexus between uh, New Zealand and Australia when it comes to rugby is inextricable. It is historic. It's permanent. It has been of significant benefit to us and to them. If from time to time uh, they get thrashed by us, well, that's good for New Zealand rugby. If from time to time we get thrashed by them, that's good for Australian rugby. But to suggest that we've sort of got to start having an argument with our, our neighbours over the ditch is just a nonsense. And, you know, we used to, as you know, I mean, I hate this business, but we used to. Yeah, I guess people right. think, oh, there they go. They're going yeah. back you know, <laughs> yeah, 30, know. 40 years. But, I mean, in New Zealand, New South Wales and Queensland, there was a time when arguably, and my New Zealand friends won't mind me saying this, arguably were the finest provincial sides in the world. And part of that strength derived from the fact that every year, and I, I coached New South Wales, every year we went to New Zealand, every year. The fixtures were organised and we might have played Canterbury, we might have played Waikato, uh, we might have played Auckland, and there'd be three, or Manawatu, you know, but there'd be three matches. And these were really tough mini-test matches, and you learnt, you, you learnt very rapidly how good you were. And then when the test series came... And New Zealand came to Australia in the test series. Well, they played New South Wales. They played New South Wales country. They played Queensland. They played Queensland country. They played combined southern states. And all of these, all of these provinces, provincial areas, they got thrashed by the All Blacks, but they saw the way rugby should be played. So the All Blacks injection into these areas grew the game enormously, made people excited about the game. None of that happens anymore, and it's called progress. Well, I don't call that progress. I call that going back. Yeah, it's regression, isn't it? Alan Jones is with us on the platform. Is Dave Rennie the right guy? And the subpar to that question is, given the, the plain cattle that you've got, the injuries and everything else, I mean, we're, you know, we've got uh, you know, a, a, a country that bemoans Ian Foster, of course, because we're losing matches. Um, but you've got a guy that, that really does, it was really up against it in terms of what he's got to actually work with. Do you cut him a lot more slack than what we are, are cutting our own coach here? No, I don't. And for one reason, look, I don't know Dave Rennie. I understand he's a very nice man, and I'm sure he is. But I ask a very simple question. Would the All Blacks ask me to coach New Zealand? They wouldn't, and they shouldn't. No, never. No. They wouldn't, they, they wouldn't and they shouldn't. Now, we've got, we, we bring these New Zealand coaches in, nothing against New Zealand at all. Uh, most of them get sacked, uh, so they take a big payout at the end and disappear. So there is no legacy. Now, this is, we're in exactly the same situation as we are with players. We have to encourage our coaches. We've got some outstanding young coaches. They should be coaching Australia, not Dave Rennie. But let me just come back to the very valid point that you have made there about injuries. Now, there's something seriously wrong with the preparation of a team if a whole stack of them are in the grandstand injured. And that's tied up with 
the way in which you train, uh, the kind of work you do. We spend far too much time in gyms lifting weights than we do playing with the football. Now, you know, I remember years ago when I was, they said to me, oh, Alan, you've got to come out. There's a brand new facility built at Moore Park, a rugby facility, beautiful place. So out I went with the CEO of New South Wales Rugby, so I'd like to show you around. It took, it took him about an hour and a quarter to show me around. And there were, you know, hot tubs here and there were uh, eating rooms there. There were video session chambers there. There was something else there. So at the end of it, he said, oh, what do you think? I said, well, it's beautiful. But you know something? I didn't see football anywhere. <laughs> so, yeah, now, right. You can't, you, you can't, it, this game is about playing with the football. And that's where I'm critical of Foster because, you know, New Zealand have lost. And I think Schmidt most probably has made a big difference here. But New Zealand's strength was to play away from the ruck, to yes. play away from the set piece, to put the ball through the hands. And that's how they, and the fullbacks, you have these magnificent fullbacks. And let me say, I hope that that's what my team did. And we had we, we attacked from the fullback position. We played the space, and the p- crowds were on their feet. They couldn't wait to come through the turnstiles next week. Now we've got this pick and drive stuff, where the bulk of the time is spent on the ground. It's as boring as all hell, and you've got commentators who are absolute well. Oh, don't start me on the commentators, and they say, now listen, if tonight the All Blacks are playing Australia, if Australia can win the collision, then I think we're a big chance of winning the Test. And there are women thinking, what do you say? Win the collision. I'm not having my boy playing a game where they're just colliding one another and all this stuff about all this stuff about head injuries and all the rest of it. Whereas when I took over the Wallabies, the first thing I did was take them to a netball game because, as you know, the netball quarters is about as big as a table block. Yeah. And they thought I was stupid. What are you doing here? I said, look, I want, to, want you to watch this because in netball, the girls never pass to anyone. They pass to a space and they run into the space. Yeah. That's the way we're going to play rugby. That's how we're going to play rugby. And that's how we did play rugby. And and we beat the world. We won a Grand Slam. We beat them over there and all the rest of it. So, you know, it can be done. There is another way of playing the game. And and I think that Robertson has done that with Canterbury. Why he can't get a Guernsey, I don't know. But Schmidt did make a big difference to Ireland, which in a sense, people say, oh, well, that just proves your theory when you say, you know, Dave Rennie shouldn't be coached in Australia and Australia should be. But I think the Northern Hemisphere have needed a significant injection into them of Southern Hemisphere thinking in rugby. And uh, that has been provided. But on the other hand, Eddie Jones, who tends to, you know, lose the dressing room every two years, but he was the person who sort of initiated this pick and drive stuff, which has ruined the game. I mean, we've got to play the ball off the ground, not on the ground. Play it on the ground, forget it. They're not interested. It's boring and it creates a, a festival for the referee to blow his whistle about anything. <laughs> We thank you so much for your time, and you've just been so generous with it. Finally, then, let's just talk about... It was free. It was free. I, know. You know, I didn't even charge you. <laughs> let, let's, talk, let's just talk about what's going to happen tonight. We, you know, we're sitting over this side, and the one, one... Absolutely no idea. You don't know, I don't know. Well, the one which question... That's up, it. The one que- team is turning That's up. it. Go the on. one question we have is the consistency. Do we see la- do we see the team that played last time against Argentina That's or the it. first time? Do we see the team that played at Joburg no, or the team I, that played yeah, at Nelsburg? Well, we don't know, Alan. And and for the first time in well, a long time, we you, don't know. Let, let me just tell you this. No one, I challenge anyone, two free airline tickets around the world first class to any Australian and indeed New Zealander who can name me the Australian side. This is the problem with Dave Rennie. I mean, the team changes every week. It's now musical chairs. We've got about seven different changes in the side tonight. And and where, why we'd pick this halfback? I mean, there's a magnificent halfback in Queensland, Tate McDermott. He can't seem to get a Guernsey. Kirtley Beale, well, he's in, out there in the wilderness. We brought back a 33-year-old oh, bloke. I know. Been been I, know. Back. Oh, I know. I can't. I can't. I mean, we've got outstanding kids who played Super Rugby. Why do you play Super Rugby? Because a national selector will note you and you'll make the progression to the next level. Now, Donaldson and Ed Bed have played outstanding rugby during the Super Rugby season and they've forgotten. So no one in Australia knows what the Wallaby team is except that it bears no relationship to the Wallaby team that played two weeks ago. How do you? You have to have combinations to win test matches. So I don't know what's going to. I've no idea what's going to happen tonight. Perhaps, perhaps the referee will win it, and it'll be one on goal kicks. Will it? 